Hey guys, Lady Turin here, and here is a video that Turin had been nagging me to film for quite some time now, and namely a painting tutorial. I'm not quite sure you can call it a tutorial since this is a pretty basic job, but let's see how and what uh, I did with Scribius Wretch, the Taliman for the Death Guard. Wow. So after spray painting him with Death Guard Green, I'm going to sort of start with the usually uh, last element, namely the wash. So Agrax Earthshade all over the model, and the reason why is starting with uh, with the wash and then dry brushing the whole model saves me from wow I'm sorry burping saves me from uh, the dreaded edge highlights. Uh, I just I I can never make them look as good as a dry brush looks. So. Luckily, the uh, the armor is done for. Now for the metallics, which I absolutely hate. I just uh, no matter how much I shake the bottle, it just it doesn't matter. Uh, I can shake harder than Taylor Swift. They do not mix to the consistency that I enjoy painting with. Regardless, both of are gold, the sort of a coppery gold. I go over all the trims in the armor. Um, I am pretty sure that this crescent shape on top of him was also supposed to be gold, but it's too late now. The second metallic, uh, fortunately for me, there were only two that I needed to apply. The lead belcher silver is the second one, uh, only a couple elements. And for the palette, I'm just using a plastic cutting board from uh, a dollar store because uh, wet palette is just too much work. So dampened uh, cutting board works quite as well. And for uh, all pieces of wood as well as uh, book covers that the Taliban has, I used the snake bite leather contrast. It actually uh, did a pretty good job. And again, another contrast, Black Templar, just to go over the pipes and elements of his pistol. Uh, I could have used Abaddon Black, obviously, but I actually had the contrast laying on my desk and the Abaddon Black was in the other room and that's the only reason why it's the contrast. Back to the Balthazar Gold, um, because I forgot those little bindings on the book. No biggie. And now that the gold and black and brown and yeah, all those colors are done, uh, it's time for the bones, for which I actually used Kislev Flesh. I do have Zandri uh, handy, and I'm actually going to use Zandri for the parchment uh, the strips and, and pieces, but um, I'm missing Ushapti bone, and without Ushapti, Zandri just doesn't do it for me when it comes to the bones. On the other hand, Kislev Flesh uh, has that nice yellow undertone. Uh, I think it ended up looking pretty well. Not that it matters because I actually dry brushed both the bones and the parchment using the same concussion a mixture of two colors, as you will see. So now the parchment uh, I'm using in the Zandri dust. And uh, a little too late, but I uh, did find out that I was supposed to scribble on those little pieces of parchment. Maybe I'll go back and scribble over them. Probably not. Either way, going back to Kislev Flesh and mixing it. No, not mixing it. I'm going back with Kislev Flesh to prime the Nurgling for some funky flesh tone. And to have him stand out, I decided to use a Magus Purple, and it being a contrast, he was pretty much done in one take. Uh, and I really do like the color I gave him. And uh, more Zandri dust, because the little guy, whom Turin and I decided to name Pumba, <clears throat> He's carrying uh, all those parchments for the Taliman, so gotta paint them. And now it's time for the flesh. 
Uh, on the contrary to majority of Death Guard models that Turin has, um, the Taliman does not have that much of the flesh going on. He's a modest guy, he's not he's not flashing too much, uh, but he does have that pipe and those uh, two tentacles holding the tally. I hope that's how you actually call it in English. I'm shooting from the hip a little bit here. I would usually use Bagman's glow, but I wanted the tentacles and the uh, fleshy pipe to match his face. Now, as for the cloth and his hood, um, I decided to go with Nagaroth Knight, simply because purple is actually my favorite color one off. And uh, it was a little bit of a pain in the ass because a uh, clever little me glued the Nurgling way too close to the Taliman. So I definitely did not have fun painting those uh, not really accessible parts. Now that the purple is done, I'm going with Agrax Earthshade again. Uh, the armor is done, but all those elements I painted later are not. So. All the gold, silver, the bones, um, the books, all that stuff needs to uh, get some Agrax, some Agrax action. All right, Agrax is done. Time for Corobora Crimson, which I'm going to use for the tentacles and that flesh on the pipe. Not for his face though. I sort of want him to look all pale and uh, you know kind of grayish so no carobar on the face i actually slapped some agrax there not too much so those two washes are done uh time for some highlights so zirius is that how you pronounce it zirius purple um as you're going to see later i actually ended up using an even brighter shade of purple to have those highlights stand out more because uh, for some reason, I don't know, uh, usually uh, uh, Zerius did a very good job highlighting Nagareth Knight, but not this time. It's uh, a little, just a little too dark. Purple highlights done. Time for my probably most hated metallic paint. Gehenna's gold is the scourge of my painting life. Uh, I just... I can mix it like it was a witch's cauldron. Just stir it and stir it and it still has the consistency of some sort of mucky goo that probably belongs in Wookiee's mall. Uh, luckily here the pigments mixed well enough to have some sort of a highlighting action and the, now that all the gold is highlighted it's time to do exactly the same thing using silver. Stormhost silver to highlight the lead belcher and boom! Splotch! It's just... can end me. I hate when that happens, I hate highlighting with metallics just as much as I hate painting with them. Uh, fortunately, not too much silver in here. And to highlight the bones and the parchment, I mixed Zendri dust with Pallid Witch Flesh. And using that mixture, I partly dry brushed, partly edge highlighted all the bones and all the parchment and it actually ended up looking decent, I think. You guys probably noticed um, that pipe going from his mouth. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be seamlessly joined with that um, backpack part. But uh, I wasn't paying attention that much uh, when I was gluing him, so later I will have to do some surgery on it. You'll see. Uh, Mornfang Brown to highlight the books and the wood. <laughs> um, 
yeah, uh, I'm actually really happy with how the wood turned out. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Uh, all right, come on, come on, Anna, you're not five. Um, so uh, I think I achieved a pretty cool leathery look on the books and a pretty decent look on the wooden panel. And here's the Gene Steeler purple that I actually used sometime, meantime, I don't know, I did not record it, to uh, highlight the purple cloth further. And I think that did the trick. Um, and I know that I used the black contrast to, uh, 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 to paint all the black elements, but I felt like it needed a little bit of an extra pop, so Green Reaper it is. And for the next part, I'm going to mix Rackard Flesh with Pallid Witch Flesh and do my best to highlight the tentacles. That's something I dread every time I paint uh, a Death Guard model, because I just cannot for the life of me successfully highlight surface surfaces which do not have defined edges but thankfully because the mixed shade was very delicate and i did a very soft dry brush it actually looks pretty damn good now for <laughs> i saw pretty amazing uh, paint jobs out there where people really did some incredible scribbles um, on the Tallyman's parchment, but I'm cheesy, so I just wrote Turin with some sort of a calligraphy marker, and uh, again, I have super shaky hands, so um, yeah, uh, mm, <laughs> couldn't do anything impressive there. And uh, now that the big boy is done, time for the base, and uh, the base is the really the only part that I added some mixed media fun to. Uh, well, first I slapped the mud, it, uh, waited forever for it to dry. I'm dry brushing it with palette witch flesh now. And I left some space for, uh, for a puddle of swamp because a majority of turned models um, have those uh, uh, on their bases. But instead of making a flat puddle, I decided to have some fun with it not make it that uh, basic basic bitch looking so i'm grabbing those uh little plastic elements those are plastic balls and what you saw earlier are sort of like a plastic little domes and i'm gonna use tacky glue to adhere the dome and the several plastic balls of different sizes in an attempt to try and create an effect of a bubbling swamp So here's uh, me struggling uh, terribly with operating tweezers and getting those, uh, yeah, those stubborn little sheds uh, onto those glue patches. Yeah, uh, not, not bad. All right, I know that for now it looks like uh, butterfly poop in there but obviously i'm going to put a lot of paint and a lot of layers under and now that the glue is dry time for some uh, interesting medium it's a semi uh, gloss regular gel which is generally used i think to uh thin out paint uh, in fine arts i wouldn't know i use it uh, partially as an adhesive, sometimes as a sealer, and sometimes to build a structure, like here. Because uh, not only is mixing it with a, uh, it's just a simple green acrylic paint, uh, mixing it together uh, is not only going to lay the first um, layer of color, lay the layer well, but also since it has adhesive uh, properties, it's going to ensure that those little plastic elements stay in place. I also, I don't know why I didn't film it, but I scratched out little nurgling footprints uh, in the mud. Uh, hopefully they will end up being visible. And now that the gel is dry, it dries translucent, so you basically see uh, mostly the acrylic paint, 
uh, I'm going to take the same paint and mix it with a uh, black gesso. So gesso is just a paint primer and uh, instead of using a G-dubs color, which I don't have and I don't even remember uh, how it's called, I'm going to mix up a pretty dark green and uh, put it on top of the gel. And gesso will be useful because it uh, guarantees a good grip and uh, gel surface is obviously um, not the optimal kind of surface you want to paint on. And now it's white gesso, same stuff, different color, mixed with uh, the same <laughs> green paint because I wanted to highlight the tops of the bubbles just to, you know, uh, in, in, in an attempt to make them look a little more dynamic, not flat. And back to G-dubs with Nurgle's rot after everything is nice and dry. And slapping a thick, 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 thick layer of Nurgle's rot. And uh, yeah, I think I mentioned, I must have mentioned uh, these... Um, well, uh, a, a little mess up with gluing, uh, where the pipe endings uh, of two different elements do not, they did not come together. So I'm just gonna pretend like it's intentional and there's goo just flying, uh, you know, out of, out of the hole in the pipe. Some Nurgle's rot for the sweet, uh, juicy postures on the Nurgling. I don't know how my tripophobia is not triggered every time I see Death Guard models. So yeah, the swamp is drying. Uh, so meanwhile, I'm going to paint the rim of the base black. And again, I probably should have used Abaddon, but uh, two layers of Black Templar contrast worked just as well. Uh, actually, I would even argue that a contrast is uh, much easier to, you know, to, to keep it under control and keep it uh, aligned with the rim and avoid accidents, Spl splashing the black paint on the mud and scraping it up later and it's just, oh Jesus. So, uh, now I'm mixing Nurgle's Rot with uh, the Black Templar contrast because after drying, I still think the swamp looks a little too flat and I'm going to play around with some light and shadow to try and get those bubble um, looking fly and uh, definitely more dynamic. So I'm just dabbing the darker shade that I obtained by mixing Black Templar with Nurgle's Rod and now the most important tool uh, ever, a Q-tip. I'm just wiping, uh, I'm just wiping the darker shade from elevated surfaces and then back with a lighter shade, just trying to contain the, uh, the darker shade um, to the crevices and just around the bases of the bubbles. Um, I would love to uh, be able to explain it uh, better in some more professional artistic language, but I'm sorry, uh, light, dark green dab with q-tip is all I have and like I said light shadow <laughs> light shadow a little more shadow and a little more clean Nurgle sprouts on top of the bubbles to ensure that they are all nice and glistening and shiny I think all in all it ended up looking pretty well and uh, pretty dynamic um, yeah not bad <laughs> Uh, a little bit of a casual work, but bear with me. So here's our tallyman, all done and ready to kick ass. And to close that video off, I wanted to show you guys a couple snippets of some art pieces I've been recently working on. Uh, some of them are up uh, already in, and available in my Etsy store. Some of them are still waiting for their turn. Um, I actually have the commissions open right now if you wanted to order something custom. The best way to do that is to either go to my Etsy store and um, click the request custom order button, or you can contact me um, through an email. And both of those are going to be in the description box. And um, yeah, and uh, in the end of the video where <laughs> I left you guys some a little bit of a surprise. Uh, so 
thank you so very much for watching i hope that this rather uh, casual and basic paint work uh, was to your liking let me know if you'd like to see more of those i'm pretty sure that torrent would be more than delighted to chase me and nag me to paint more of his models now he's gonna have an argument that it's for the channel so again thank you guys i hope to see you on my instagram and tiktok take care